Hi and welcome to another Watch Geek video. Today we're taking a closer look at the Matterhorn Divemaster 300, a watch I unboxed a couple of weeks ago and one that you can still pre-order on their Kickstarter page. The watch I'm reviewing today is a bit different than the production version, just as I mentioned in the unboxing, as this prototype is powered by a Seiko NH35 movement that results in a thickness of 14.5 mm which is a lot for a simple three-hander with a date. Luckily Matterhorn thought the same, so they decided to switch to a higher grade Miyota 9015 that brings down the thickness by more than a millimeter. In watch terms that is a lot. Another benefit of the switch to Miyota is the fact you get a better movement spec-wise. While this beats away at 21,600 bph, or 6 times a second, the Miyota powered production models will beat at 28,800 bph or 8 times a second, which will give them a smoother seconds hand glide as well as better timekeeping. At least that's my experience when comparing these two movements. This change resulted in a $40 price difference, in my opinion a worthy upgrade. Another thing they tried changing but it was too late is the date. They wanted to switch to a frameless and dial color match to date that makes it blend in and to make it mimic the 6, 9 and 12 numerals. But sadly there was simply no time. Luckily for those of us who like perfect symmetry, a no date version will be available. As for the brand itself, it originates from the UK, and the name Matterhorn comes from one of the deadliest peaks in the world, located in the European Alps, thus the mountain logo. As a side note, this same peak was also an inspiration for the shape of the Toblerone chocolate. Now some have commented in the unboxing, why would a mountain inspired brand make a dive watch as their first model? Why not a mountaineering watch? And the fact is, dive watches sell. So if you're starting a brand and want to make a successful first model that will help you fund future projects, going for a dive watch is a much safer bet. For that reason, I understand the reasoning behind this model and do hope it gives them enough success to make them try other watch types as well. So how good is this thing as a dive watch? Well, pretty good. It comes with 300 meters of water resistance thanks to a robust construction and a well-protected screwing crown. The size is also pretty much perfect, with just over 40 millimeters in diameter and under 49 millimeters lug to lug, so it wears well and comfortably even on my 6.7 inch wrist. It comes with an excellent and pretty massive bracelet with solid links and links and a machined clasp, and as expected a sapphire crystal. The finish is also perfect for a dive watch, as it is brushed all over, meaning it will resist and hide scratches well, while the bezel insert is made of aluminium, giving it resistance to breaking, but it will pick up scratches more than a ceramic one would. Now the loom is also excellent and there is more than enough of it, so these are the things that make it a great dive watch. However, there are a few details that make it more a desk diver than a real diver. The first thing is the bezel. The bezel action is smooth and has 120 precise clicks, but the grip, which does look very cool and goes well with the rest of the watch, does slip when you try to operate it with your bare hands, which makes me think it will be close to impossible to operate it using gloves. Another dressy thing are the hands. Although they're beautiful and go well with the framed markers, the hour and minute hand are too similar for my liking. Again, okay on a dressy or an elegant desk dive watch, but not very good for a real dive watch. That is something I would definitely change or at least one of the hands to make them more different and easier to read at a glance, but it's not a deal breaker. The dial itself is matte black and in combination with the framed markers and contrasting loom is very legible, with a bit of an older Omega Planet Ocean vibe, so I do like it. So all in all a pretty well executed watch for the price and with the customization option of the date no date and this side plaque where you can order it without one if you find this tacky means you will be able to get a watch that matches your taste closer. 
My choice would definitely be a no date and no plaque version, as it would look the cleanest. But that's just my taste. Anyways, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like and subscribe and until the next video, bye.